today. Hmm, these things don't look like they're in the church, do they? How about this? Do you recognize this? Maybe our Bible passage for the day will help you get a hint. A reading from Matthew chapter 5 verses 14 through 16. You are the light of the world. A city built on a hill cannot be hidden. No one after lighting a lamp puts it under the bushel basket, but on the lampstand, and it gives light to all in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before others, so that they may see your good works and give glory to the Father in heaven. If you guessed, I was out here in our church's prayer garden, then give yourself a pat on the back. You are exactly right. And maybe this is a place that you have never actually been before. So I would love to take you on a little tour of this very special spot. And I want to end at a part of this prayer garden that I think will help you understand the Sunday, All Saints Sunday, a little bit better. So let's go on a tour. When you enter our beautiful prayer garden, the first thing you see down here is this lovely fountain bubbling away with fresh water inside. Any ideas about what that might mean? If you guessed it had something to do with water and the waters of baptism, you are exactly right. This fountain is intended to help us remember the beginning of our walk with God. The beginning of our time where God said, you are so special to me, you are my child, I claim you as my own and you are part of my great big family. So every time we enter this beautiful space, these waters are not only supposed to be relaxing and beautiful sounding, but they also are supposed to help us remember our baptism. So when you come here into the prayer garden, feel free to dip your fingers into the waters and make the symbol of a cross on your forehead as a way to remember your baptism. And remember that before you were even able to say words, that God loved you more than anything. Now, as we go right beyond these waters, we see this magical thing over here. Now, some people feel like this looks like a maze, and I suppose it does in a way. All those stones weave around this giant circle and in the center, there is that beautiful cross. I wonder what it is for. Well, I'll tell you, this is called a labyrinth. Now, a labyrinth does look like a maze, but remember one of the things about mazes is that they have little places where there's a dead end or a place where they might try to trick you into guessing that this is the way out of the maze but it's not really the way out. But a labyrinth doesn't have any tricks or any dead ends. In fact, there's only one way in and out of the labyrinth. That's this little part right here. This is the only way in and out. And as we go around each of these folds, it takes us closer and closer and closer to the center of the labyrinth a place where we can really celebrate our closeness with God. The idea and how this prayer garden was structured is that you would start here and you would stretch into this stage of the labyrinth, which would remind us of our long walk with God, our long and meaningful walk with God all through the labyrinth. On the other side of the labyrinth is the place where I actually want to spend the most time today is a special place called a columbarium. Now I'm guessing if you've been down to the prayer garden, you might not have spent very much time back here. And that's okay. This is a part of our church where you can see all of the names like over on the walls there. Those are names of people that were once alive and whose bodies are no longer working. And now that is where they are buried. So let's stop for just a minute 
and talk our way through this. So I want to pause here for just a minute and talk about why we have a columbarium and why this is at the end of our prayer garden and walk today. You see, all bodies go through a process in life. We are born and we live life. And at some point, our bodies will stop working. They'll stop eating and drinking or sleeping or laughing. Our bodies will have done all of the work that they can do and they will be done. And when that happens, we say that someone has died. Now, when somebody dies, the family who loves and misses that person wants to put their body that they don't need anymore into a safe place. So sometimes they put their body into a long box called a casket, and that casket is placed safely in the ground in a place where the family knows that they can come back and do their remembering. And sometimes families choose to have that body changed by fire, and they take those ashes and put them into a special jar called an urn. And when that happens, they can be buried in a place like our columbarium. And a columbarium is a lovely wall that has little doors into things that look kind of like a mailbox, but they're not a mailbox. They are a special resting place for someone's urn, and that can be the place where they are safely buried. And then their family knows where they can come and remember. Now, this may seem kind of sad, and that's okay. It is sad when someone we love dies, it does feel sad, that is normal. It's normal for us to cry. It's normal for us to miss them because the missing them is a part of loving them. When we love somebody and we can't see them, we miss them, right? And that is normal. That is how we're made to be because we are creatures who love just like our God loves us. But what I want you to remember is that this is not the end of our story. Jesus teaches us that there is more to our story after our body stops working because the best parts of us, the part that makes me Miss Eleanor and all my quirky weirdness and makes you really special and wonderful and funny and fast and unique in God's eyes. Those parts of you are called your soul. It's something we can't see, like we can see my eyes or my hands, but it is something that is a part of us that makes us who we are. And part of what Jesus tells us is that when we die, we will be like him. We will get a new life, a new start in heaven. And that best part of us, that soul that makes who we are who we are, will go and be with God in heaven. So it's normal for those of us who are missing somebody here to feel sad and want a place to go and remember. Sometimes we might cry or want to hug somebody else that's also feeling the same way. But I want you to know that part of what we're celebrating on All Saints Day is that those people are living on with God. So on All Saints Sunday, we have a very special tradition. We believe that each of us is a light, just like our Bible story told us for the day. We each have a light inside of us. And when we die, when our body stops working, that light does not go out. It goes to be with God and shines brighter and brighter and brighter. And so part of what we do on All Saints Sunday is we call the name of somebody in our church family who we love, who has died this year, and we light a candle to help us remember that their light is still shining with God. And maybe you have someone in your life that you love that died this year that doesn't go to our church. So we may not call their name in worship like we do here at our church, but at home, you can take a candle and you can light that candle and say that person's name. And when you do, I hope you will share with your family something really special about that person. What was it about the way they let their light shine that was special to you? How did their bright light help you see God's heart more clearly? How did their light lead you right into God's arms? Because that's what the saints do. The saints are just people who let their light shine and help us all know God better. So whether you're helping us celebrate this week in worship by lighting the candles for those members of our church family, or whether you are lighting them at home for our church family or somebody in your family that you love, that you miss, and that you wanna remember that their light is still shining, 
I hope you will take some time with candles and I hope you will take some time remembering as a family that our light never goes out. That's part of what Jesus promises is that we have a whole new beginning. All right, friends, I loved this time with you. And if you ever want to talk about what it means to die and what it means to go to heaven, I don't have all of the answers because none of us do exactly. There are some mystery to this story, but I'm always glad to talk with you about it. It is not scary to me to talk about with you. And I'm happy to talk with you about it anytime you want to. Okay. All right. I love y'all. You are going to be saints in my life. And I am grateful for the way you are letting your light shine. So let that be your challenge this week. Let your light shine, shine so brightly that somebody asks you the question, why did you do that really cool thing? And you can say, I'm letting my light shine so people can understand what God's heart looks like because I'm trying to reflect God's heart through my light. All right, friends, I wonder where I'll end up next week. Who knows? I hope you tune in to find out. We'll see you later. Bye. Let us pray. Dear God, thank you so much for all the people who have let their light shine for you. Other people's lights have helped us see you more clearly. Thank you, God, for all the saints who have shared your love with the world. In Jesus' name, amen. Do, do, do. Ooh,